kelp forests and reefs of Southern California are some of the most biologically rich and diverse underwater areas in the world. These areas used to support huge populations of abalone. Today, the white abalone is virtually on the edge of extinction. More than 280 tons of white abalone were taken by scuba and hookah divers in the 1970s. After seven years of harvesting, the adult populations were exhausted and the harvest dropped to near zero. It was thought that isolated deep water populations would be able to replenish the stock. Unfortunately, this thinking was flawed and a large California industry collapsed. So for the last two days, we've been out with the research submarine Delta looking uh, on deep reefs for these white abalone. Uh, we've spent uh, oh, about 12 hours of searching now, and uh, we've only found five live animals uh, in a place where we would have found uh, maybe uh, 30 to 50,000 live animals in the 1970s. Uh, this is what's left, these shells. We found over a hundred of the old shells. Live white abalone, like the one seen here on the rock, are spread so far apart that they cannot breed effectively. If this animal is going to be saved from extinction, drastic measures must be taken. By using a submarine, scientists from the National Park Service, California Fish and Game, and the United States Geological Survey are hoping to locate enough white abalone that could be moved to a controlled habitat for breeding. The search begins with carefully planning submarine dives in the most likely areas to find a remote, unharvested population. It looks like really good rocky habitat that sticks up here in the northwest end. So we got, uh, that's our number one dive tomorrow morning. Once the sites are picked, the dives begin. The research on these submarine dives is hoping to answer two key questions. First, are there still pockets of white abalone survivors in reefs deeper than scuba and hookah divers usually go? And second, can we find enough survivors to restore the population and save the species from extinction? So each one of these reefs could conceivably have its own little self-replicating population of white abalone. And if that's the case, we really have our job cut out for us. We're hoping that we'll find out in deep water, in some areas that maybe have never been dived, we'll find some old populations of white apple that are just uh, living and doing their thing. After days of searching, the researchers become very discouraged. Thousands of meters of prime white abalone habitat pass by the windows of the submarine, but mostly empty shells are found. The monotony generated by hours of searching in vain is occasionally broken by surprises like this mola mola and the sea lion chasing bait fish. The research support vessel tracks the sub from the surface using an electronic pinger. They stay close and in contact with voice communications in case of any emergency. Finally, the search pays off and they start to find some live animals. A solitary white abalone is found in about 150 feet of water. Oh, white ab, right there, right there on the rock. Just went right over it. Awesome. Wow, it's beautiful. All the locations of these solitary live animals, like the one seen here, are marked with global positioning so they could be retrieved later for breeding. After several hours, the sub returns to the surface for service in another researcher. The cramped space inside the submarine becomes uncomfortable after a few hours. If enough live white abalone are found to initiate a breeding program, the breeding will be done in the controlled environment of a commercial abalone farm. Like the red abalone shown here, white abalone collected in the ocean would be placed in tanks to spawn. When the sperm and eggs are released in a concentrated area, reproductive success is ensured. Once the broadcast spawn has occurred, thousands of eggs are fertilized by the sperm and larval abalone are formed. The resulting larvae would be placed in various growth tanks and raised to become the broodstock for a new wild population. In this tank we have the 
first phase of raising the abalone, really, where we take them from the very young larvae up to a size of about an inch or half an inch. What we grow in here, we grow algae. A, the microalgae grow on plates, and we settle the larvae right on these plates. Uh, this is a technique that was originally developed in Japan. It's uh, used throughout the world today. You can see here, we'll lift this up a little bit. These are abalone that have grown up on these plates here. These are little red abalone. Let's stay in here for about eight months uh, to 10 months, possibly as long as 12 months. Once they get to about this size, or even sometimes uh, much smaller, even half this size, we can take the abalone off of these plates and switch them to a diet of pure kelp. The experience that, that has already uh, been gained with the different species of abalone shows us that we can produce large quantities of abalone in a relatively small facility, in a relatively small space. We have also know that once we start to produce abalone in the hatchery, say we get a three inch animal, those animals are capable of producing up to a million eggs per female, per spawn. Uh, that's a pretty good spawning pool if you start putting out a thousand of those animals together. We jump ahead by using this sort of approach. It will take both time and money to rebuild this depleted species. For success, researchers must find and capture enough of these animals for a diverse broodstock, then breed them and raise the next generation and finally release enough large adults on protected reefs to re-establish self-sustaining wild populations. Is it worth the effort to bring back white abalone? Ask divers, scientists, and the general public this question, and the answer is almost always a resounding yes. And we need to put a fraction of the money that we got from the resource back into the resource so we have something for future generations. White abalone are only the first of many exploited species in jeopardy. What we learn about restoring them will help us with others. It is no longer sufficient to simply limit what humans take from the sea. Blinded by ignorance of the sea's ways, people unintentionally cause this crisis. Left alone, these few solitary animals will not produce another generation. Now people must act intentionally to prevent white abalone extinction and to restore them or they will be lost forever.